Hi and welcome to another video here on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at one of the newer features in UiPath Studio, and that's remote debugging. Before we start, be sure to subscribe to my channel. You click that little red watermark down in the lower right. That way I'll know that you're out there watching. And if you hit the notification bell as well, you'll be notified when I put out new videos. And that happens about once or twice a week, depending. Also, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really makes a difference to me and to that infamous YouTube algorithm. So let's get to it. So if you've seen my other videos, you might have come across the picture in picture video where I demonstrate, well, the picture in picture function that allows you to run while in debug mode, the automation in a separate window session, but on the same computer. That's really helpful because that way the automation can run without being sort of interrupted by you using the mouse or keyboard, among other things. But in this video, we're taking it one step further. We are using the new remote debugging function, and that allows you to run in debug mode the automation on a completely different machine, for example, on a machine in your production environment, if you need to do that for some reason. Now, this video is not about why you might want to do that. I'm not going to show you a ton of scenarios. I'm just going to show you how to connect the remote debugger to a remote machine. And there's two ways of doing it, and I'll show you both in this video. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. So you've been looking at this empty studio for a while now. So I'll just build a very, very quick uh, automation. I'll go to the design tab. I'll start my recorder and I have my good old friend, the calculator here in the background. And I'll just click the one button. Then I'll click the plus button. I will click the five button. And I'll click the equal sign. And I'll click Save, and inside Studio now we have a very simple automation that adds two numbers and shows us the result inside of Calculator. Now I want to get that result using a get text activity. I'll just indicate the field here. And then I will save that result into a variable called my result, and then use a message box to display that result. And that message box, we can configure that to automatically close after four seconds. And we'll click OK. And I'll just go to the debug tab and disable the picture and picture function. And then debug the file locally. And we can see that calculator starts up. It clicks the one button, the plus sign, and the five button, and then equal sign. And then shows the results in a message box. And after four seconds, which should be now, it closes that message box. And that's it. Now, this automation is not one that is prone to cause a lot of problems when being deployed to a production environment. I admit that. But as I said, that's beyond the point and scope of this video. But now we're going to connect to a remote machine. And up here on the right hand side, if we zoom out a little bit, you can see that I have a virtual machine running. And that's just a virtual machine configured to run unattended automations. And what I'll do real quick is I'll simply sign out the user that is logged in here, and that is the robot user. And what happens is when I then run the automation in remote debugging mode, the robot account executing the automation will sign into this machine, execute the automation, and sign back out just as in quote unquote real life. So how do we configure this remote debugging? Well, in the debug tab of Studio, we have a new button over here. We have this remote debugging uh, button. And first, we'll start by clicking here at the bottom and then configure the remote debugging. And we can see that there are a couple of connection types. By default, it's disabled, but we can either connect to a remote machine or to an unattended robot. And we'll start by connecting to an unattended robot, which is what we have up here in the other machine. And as soon as I do that, basically, it's going to check if I have a robot available. And if I click Save now, we have enabled remote debugging. That means that this automation that I ran before in my local calculator, I'll just close that because we don't need it anymore. If I now click debug file, we'll see that up here in the, the virtual machine that the robot account logs in and it starts up the calculator. And the calculator starts up, it clicks one plus five equals and then shows the result in a dialog or message box and then closes the message box, closes calculator and signs out of the machine again. So that was that. And of course, if I click uh, 
up here at the beginning of my automation, if I set a breakpoint and run it again, the robot account signs in. starts our calculator and stops at the breakpoint. And then just as usual, you know, I can step into and step over the different activities here. So if I step into the click one activity, well, it's going to click the one button, click the plus button. And just like that, and you have access to all of the, the locals and variables and stuff like that, as you usually would. So really this is just like debugging on your local machine, except it's not on your local machine. It's on the remote machine, hence the name remote debugging. So that was connecting using an available unattended robot. We had another connection option over here. So if I click the configure remote debugging again, we could see that here we had the remote machine option as well. Now there are a couple of limitations. And one is that if you use what I did first, the unattended connection type, you can only connect remotely to machines in the same tenant as the one that Studio is connected to. With the remote machine connection type, you can actually connect to machines in other tenants. Now, I only have one tenant here and it's going to work fine, but I'll just show you how it works because there's a couple of things you need to do in order to run it. One thing you do need to make sure is that the port down here or whatever port you choose to use needs to be opened in the firewall so you don't run into any problems with that. So what we need to do is we need to just real quick sign into this machine. So I'll do that. And then we need to start the remote debugging agent application on the virtual machine. And we do that by going to a command prompt. Navigate to the program files folder. And then there's a subfolder called UiPath, funny enough. And then there's one called Studio. And inside of this, we can just list all of the executable files and we can see that there is one called UiPath Remote Debugging Agent.exe and that's the one we want to run. So I'll just clear the screen real quick and then we'll go with UiPath Remote Debugging Agent.exe. Now also we need to type in the keyword enable. And we can also choose to type in a password and we will just type in coffee because it's getting kind of late here in Denmark. So I just hit the enter key and we'll see that the agent application, well, it kind of disappeared, but it's actually open down here. And we can see that the agent is online and waiting for commands. So I'll just minimize it again. And what we can do now is we can test the connection down here. So I'll click test connection. And it says incorrect password configured. And that's because I, I chose in the configuration or when we started the agent that we needed to provide a password. The password was coffee. I'll type that in, test connection. And the remote machine con uh, configuration is valid. So I can save it. And now I can do exactly what I did before, except I need to stay signed in up here on the virtual machine. I can't sign out because then this agent will be stopped and that's no good for what we want to do. So again, I'll just click run the first time and we can see up in the virtual machine that the calculator starts, clicks one plus five equals and then the result in the message box and then three, two, one, close. And we have our automation. And of course it goes just as before that if we, instead of just hitting run, we want to debug the file and we have a breakpoint in here if I click the debug file button before it clicks the one button up in the virtual machine, it pauses. And now I can step into my code just as I could when using the unattended robot connection type. So again, this is, this is a feature that can come in handy if you have an automation that you think might cause some trouble when being moved to a production environment. Maybe you're developing something where you don't have access to data in your testing environment. You simply have to uh, build the robot performing, you know, open heart surgery, as we call it. Um, you can't really develop or test it, at least in a safe environment. You need to be in the production environment. The remote debugging feature can really help you out in those situations. So if you like the video, give it that thumbs up. 
uh, click it right now. I'll wait. And of course, if you didn't subscribe early on, make sure you do it now so you can follow my channel and I know you are out there. That's it for this time. It's getting very, very late. So I'm out of here. See you next time. Stay safe. Thanks. Bye.